Hello, this is Samantha Owens, and I'll be presenting to you about Aaron Gruel and the Freedom Riders Foundation. So I'll be talking about Aaron, the creative person in this situation, and also the creative environment that she cultivated in her classroom, and the eventual creative product that is the Freedom Riders Foundation. I'll also be talking about some of the processes that Aaron implemented in her classroom, as well as some of the purposes of the foundation. So about Erin Gruel, she was born in 1969 to upper middle class family in Newport Beach. She earned a bachelor's degree from University of California, Irvine. She got a master's degree in her teaching credentials from California State University, Long Beach. And she originally wanted to be a lawyer, but she decided to be more like her father, who was a civil rights activist and stand up for something important to her. Um, so she felt inspired to help underprivileged students by being a teacher. So let's start at the beginning on the first day of school. So it was the fall of 1994. Erin had uh, begun her teaching career at Woodrow Wilson High School in Long Beach, California. She was assigned to um, low performing students and they didn't have very good attitudes towards school. Uh, they had very stressful lives outside of the classroom that involved poverty, racial tensions, and gang violence. So school was definitely not at the top of their priority list. So I'm going to play you a clip here. And it has some students from this class talking about their first impressions of Aaron. A brief clip to show you what that first day was like and what my students thought of their teacher, this cheerleader from hell looking around at them it was like looking at nothing because I didn't care a lot of the students were just bad you know and I didn't expect Erin to try to teach us anything I knew that she was nothing more than a babysitter it was very evident that they didn't want to be there I could walk into my classroom and I could tell who's pissed off who's jaded who's hungry who's bored who can't wait to get out of here, who hates my guts. It's easy to be perceptive and to be in the moment. But to be in the moment, you have to be vulnerable. I had to walk in there and, and not have a guard up. I think anybody in that situation, you got to be scared out of your mind. You have to be scared out of your mind. Have to be. Have to be. Because not only are you dealing with people that don't care that you're a teacher, they don't care about you. It's personal. It's personal. So looking at these students, I realized, how can I get them to put down that fist, to put down that spray can, or worse yet, put down that gun? Because in my classroom, I had students who just came from juvenile hall, had ankle monitors around their leg, and a probation officer. Students who just came from, from rehab for crystal meth or crack cocaine. Students who bounced around from foster home to, to group home to shelter. Students who would never turn in their homework or have their parents bake me brownies. And if they did, I probably shouldn't eat them. And most of my students could care less about these dead white guys in tights. Dead white guys in tights like togas or Shakespeare. And so what I try to do is to figure out how can I teach my students that they have a story. Because we all have a story. So as you just heard, her students had a lot going on. Um, a quote from the Freedom Riders reads, Following the L.A. riots, the mood in our city was unsettling. And on our first day of high school, we had only three things in common. We hated school. We hated our teacher. And we hated each other. So some of the methods that Erin implemented in her classroom... Uh, starting off, she did uh, a toast for change where uh, students were encouraged to dream about changing their circumstances. She decided to use writing as an outlet for students to express themselves and just share their story. Journal entries were shared anonymously in class so that students could hear the story and relate to it without judging the author based on their race or what clique they were in. She found books with characters who were going through similar struggles as the students. 
And when they saw that they could relate to the people in the books, they began realizing that they also related to one another. And from that point on, Erin and her students developed a close bond and school became a retreat for these students with rough home lives. She had created an environment where these students could feel safe and accepted. These students began to take charge of their education and came up with ideas like writing to influential people they had read about in books and coming up with ways to go on educational field trips. So all these methods implemented by Erin helped change these students' ideas about school and getting an education. In 1998, all 150 of the original Freedom Riders graduated high school, and several of these students went on to college to pursue higher education. So they called themselves Freedom Riders, which was inspired by civil rights activists known as the Freedom Riders. Um, journaling gave these students an outlet and a way for them to tell their story, so it became very freeing and very a very therapeutic thing for them. So the class compiled their journal entries into a book called The Freedom Writer's Diary. And these journal entries provided a window into the turbulent lives of these students and detailed the hardships they faced on a daily basis. And this book uh, became a number one New York Times bestseller, which I thought was really cool. So eventually Aaron and the original Freedom Writers went on to establish the Freedom Writers Foundation because they wanted to replicate their experience and bring about this sort of change in other schools. So they established the foundation in 1997. And their mission is to be an advocate for all students and teachers by providing tools that facilitate student-centered learning, improve overall academic performance, and increase teacher retention. And then I just have a one minute video to show you about the foundation. Freedom Writer's Story has been published as a book, filmed by a Hollywood studio, and captured in a gritty, heart-rending documentary. In whatever form it's taken, the story has inspired and touched people all over the world. And the story continues today. Aaron Gruel and the Freedom Writers created the Freedom Writers Foundation to provide educators with tools to empower all students to succeed. Through training programs, speaking engagements, scholarships, curricula, and digital content. The Foundation is here to engage, enlighten, and empower you to make a difference. Everyone can teach one to teach another. Miss G and her students opened their hearts to the true power of education. Now, it's your turn. So the Foundation does many things. Um, to start with, they offer teacher training programs at the Freedom Rider Teachers Institute in Long Beach, California, where teachers of underprivileged and at-risk youth can be supported and taught strategies for working with these kinds of students. They're taught the Freedom Riders methodology, which the foundation describes as a proven teaching technique and curriculum designed to improve student engagement and help educators create classroom cultures that celebrate diversity and promote acceptance. The scholarships awarded by the foundation go to first generation high school graduates and college students that show academic promise despite facing adversity such as poverty, homelessness, abuse, and crime. Aaron and the original Freedom Riders also do presentations and public speaking events about their experiences. So I wanted to include an example of the Freedom Riders Foundation's impact on other students. In 2006, the Kilpatrick Stockton Law Firm invested in a group of freshmen at Washington High School in Atlanta by establishing the Freedom Riders Mentoring Program at the school. Mentoring took place once a week and focused on reading, writing, communication, and life skills. The students also went on field trips to the Civil Rights Museum in Birmingham and a senior trip to Washington, D.C. These students had more than a 97% acceptance rate into college and other sources I read said up to 99%. And they were all collectively awarded over $7 million in scholarships. So that just goes to show the type of impact that this uh, foundation is having across the country. So... Thank you guys very much for listening to my presentation on Aaron Gruel and the Freedom Writers Foundation.